All right, so stocks versus options. What should you trade? What is better? Is it better to trade stocks or is it better to trade options? That's what we're going to talk about today. And I will show you practical examples from trades that occurred today. So let me jump onto the desktop and I, I prepared a, a little notepad here for you where we talk about trading stocks and options. Now, I want to use an account size of $20,000 as an example here where I'm comparing whether it is better on an account size like ten or twenty thousand dollars to trade stocks versus options. Now, depending on your account size, just multiply uh, the numbers that I'm showing you in a moment by whatever your account size is, and uh, you'll get the idea. So the idea is on an account of twenty thousand dollars, we want to risk two percent of the account, which is. $400, not more. Now, as we are comparing stocks and options, here are the things that I want to compare. First of all, I want to write down how much we are risking trading options versus trading stocks. I also want to write down the reward. How much are we planning to make on the stock or the option? Based on this, I want to write down the risk reward ratio and also very, very important, the buying power. Now, what is the buying power? The buying power is the amount of your account that you need to reserve for this trade. It is not the risk, and you'll see this in just a moment. So let's take a look at some very specific trades that happened here this morning. So the first trade that I want to bring up is INSW. So let me just show you what happened. So this morning on the PowerX Optimizer, INSW came up as a trade as a buy to open. And the idea here is that we are buying 239 shares based on a $20,000 account at $22.84. So this is where our risk, as you can see, our stop loss here is $1.67 and we are trading 239 shares. Here, I want to keep it a little bit easier for all of us with the math. So we're trading 240 shares what is our risk? This is where we bring up our handy dandy calculator here. Per one share, we are risking $1.67 and we are trading 240 shares, meaning that our risk is exactly $400.80. So here, let's just round it to $401. Now, what is the potential reward that we are looking for? So here we're looking for a reward of $8.62 per share. Now again, bringing up our handy dandy calculator, $8.62 times 240 shares. So we're looking to make $2,069. So we're putting this into our table, $2,069. So the risk and reward ratio here, PowerX Optimizer is calculating it, it's 1 to 5.16. So let's just say 1 to 5.2. And here is the buying power that we need out of our account. Again, we are buying 240 shares and the cost per one share is $22.84. So we need $5,482 in buying power. So this is how much our buying power will be reduced when we enter the trade. Now, let me ask you, is this making sense thus far, just so that you know what happens when you're trading the stock? And again, we are trying to risk around 2% of the account here, $401. Now, let's take a look at the option here. So I prefer to trade the ITM. We will make another video on the difference between ITM and ATM. But here we're talking about the 2250 call and you see that the risk is $172 per one option. So if we want to risk overall $400, we're dividing this by 172, means that we can actually trade two options. So INSW, the option, we can trade two of them. Again, per one option, the risk that PowerX Optimizer is calculating for us, it's $172 times two, so we would risk $344 trading the option. So we're, uh, we're risking a little bit less, and this is just based on the price of the option. Now, in terms of the reward, we're looking to make $6.80. It's $680 per one option, and we are trading two options, meaning that uh, if this trade works out, we are making at least $1,000. $360. Now, as you can see, we're making a little bit less. So let's take a look at the risk reward 
which PowerX Optimizer is calculating for us. So the risk with reward is slightly lower. It's one, two, three point nine five. I'll be rounding it up so it's one, two, four, zero. So as you can see, the risk reward ratio when trading the option is slightly worse, but here's the deal. What is the buying power that we need for this? The buying power that the broker will deduct from overall buying power in the account is our entry price. So here, we're trying to enter at $2.16. We can round it up to $2.20. And since we are trading two options, this means that our buying power is $440. Can you already see what the difference is between trading stocks and trading options? Your buying power is less than 10%. Now, keep in mind, the buying power is not what you're risking. The buying power is just how much of your $20,000 yeah, is being held in reserve for this particular trade. So you can't use this money anymore. So if you trade the stock, you would still have around uh, $14,500 left. However, if you're trading the option, you still have $19,500 left. Is this making sense thus far? And uh, would you like to see another example? I wanna make sure that this video is not getting too long, but I thought it would be helpful to show you one more example of another stock versus the option. So the other trade that I wanna show you is TVTY. And here we wanted to trade 392 shares so uh, let's just round it up to 400, okay? So here we would trade 400 shares. You get the idea. Now, let's take a look at the risk first. So the risk, to bring up the calculator here, is $1.02 per one share. So we're taking a dollar two times 400 shares means that we would risk $408, which is still within our parameters. You know, we were planning to risk around 400, so here it would be a little bit more, it would be 408. Now, if this trade works out, here is what the reward would be. So the reward is $5.61. That's how much we are trying to make on this trade. And uh, we take the $5.62 times 400 shares, so we are trying to make $2,248. So the risk and reward, if you look at this, is 125.5. Now here is the buying power that we need. TVTY is trading at $11.30. So this were again, $11.30 times 400 shares. So we need $4,520 in buying power. Again, not a big deal. If you're trading a $20,000 account, it will be reduced and you have less money to trade right now, around $15,500. Very, very, very important. This is not the risk. This here is the buying power that is needed. Our risk is $408. Now let's take a look at the options tab. Our risk here, per one option is $141. So if we want to risk overall $400, we're dividing it to by 141, it's 2.83. Now, in order to make it a little bit easier to compare apples with apples here, I am actually saying that we would trade three options. And uh, $141 is what we are risking per one option. So 141 times three, it's a little bit more than our 400, but I think we're still okay here. So we would risk $423. Now the potential reward per one option is $444. So this is where we take 444 times three. And again, this is where we are looking at 1,000 $333. Again, as you can see, the risk reward ratio here is worse than if we would trade the stock. It is one to 3.15. So we are rounding it again to 1.32. So again, it would be better to trade the stock, but you're using quite a lot of your buying power. For the option, all you need, all that is reduced is your entry price. And the entry price, it's $2.47. So let's say $2.50 times three is $750. Is this making sense? So you see, you need less buying power, but also you have a smaller reward. But this is why I say usually on a smaller account, it makes sense to trade options instead of stocks. 
Now, the other important thing that I will write down here in a moment, especially when you trade a retirement account, you don't get a margin account there, so you cannot leverage the money that you have in the account and you cannot short stocks. So let, let's write this down because I do believe that this is important. So in the US, at least in a retirement account, you cannot short stocks. However, what you can do in a retirement account, you can trade put options. And with put options, you can bet on a falling market. So this brings me back to the question, what is better, trading stocks or trading options? Well, this is why I wanted to show you a direct comparison using a real life example so that you see exactly when it is more advantageous to trade stocks, when it is more advantageous to trade options. Long story short, often for smaller accounts, since you use less buying power, it makes more sense to trade options, but now you know exactly, you have a direct comparison between stocks and options so that hopefully it helps you that you can decide what is better for you. Anyhow, if you're enjoying this, make sure that you hit like and also consider subscribing to this channel. Also, there's a few other videos, hopefully right now, popping up on your screen. These are the videos that I made for you. Just click on one of the videos that you like best and I'll see you in the next video.